In this video, we'll be adding the Microsoft Word template module to our scenario. But before we do that, I'd just like to take a moment and explain what key value pairs are, and this is what we need to set up inside the module. As you'll be familiar by now, our invoice has fields with curly brackets, which denote the type of data that needs to be pulled across into them. So as an example here, I have the company name and the address. And as you can see in the background here, I have my company table and I have my company name field and my address field. So in most cases, I will use the same name in my document as the field that's coming from my table. So how Microsoft Word templates treat these is this is the key and this is the value. So they're called key value pairs. And in most cases, I would have the key as the same name as my field or my value in my database. It makes actually making the connection between the key and the value much more straightforward. Back over in our make scenario, if you add another module and search for Microsoft Word and choose Microsoft Word templates and fill a document with a batch of data. In the source module, you need to select the HTTP get a file module. That's module number seven in this scenario, which is here. Leave the file selected at the HTTP get a file selection and the name of the file to be filled out is coming from the module itself and use the file name and now we can add a value and the first thing we need to do is tell the uh, module that this is a key value pair so we're going to be setting up a value rather than a condition or a loop or section the loop or section we will cover when we're doing the line items but Everything we do so far will be a value. And then we have the key and the value. I'm using the key of company name. We don't need the curly brackets, but that's going to be this field here is my key and the value will be coming from the data uh, on the module for the company. So under the module lookup the company, I can now choose the company name here. I'm now going to add an, another item and this is also a value for a key value pair. And as before, I'm using the word address as my key as shown on the Word document. And the value will be coming from the module from the company. So look up company. I'm just going to go for the full address. So the first two values that I filled in for the company name and the address will fill in the information in the top here on my header. And both of these fields are coming from my company table. The rest of the fields in the middle here will be coming from my invoice. So the method is exactly the same, except I'll be choosing the data from a different module in my scenario. So I'm going to jump to this one here, which is uh, who raised the order, which is coming from the field added by in my invoice table. As before, I'm going to add an item and the value type is a value for a key value pair. My key will be added by, and that will link to the invoice. So if I scroll down here, these are my invoice fields, and I can open up the field here that says added by raw and pick up the identifier, which is my name. My next value will be the invoice number. So I'm going to add another item, which is a value. The key is invoice number, and the value will be coming from my invoice module and I'll use this field here, invoice number. The other fields that I'll need to complete using this method are the total including tax, the invoice date due, and the line item total sales tax and total including tax. So the process is exactly the same, mapping the fields using key value pairs, and I'll update my scenario shortly. The only one I wanted to show you that was slightly different is this one here, which is current date. I don't actually have the current date in my record, so I'm just going to use make to provide me with the current date. Uh, add another item, which is a key value pair. The key is current date and the value, I'll come up onto the top of the menu here and under the date and time section, I will use the variable now. But to ensure it's formatted correctly, I want to use format date. So I click on format date move the now operator in between the brackets and then after the semicolon i'm going to format my date as day day month month and four characters for my year 
Hopefully at this point, you'll understand how to set up your key value pairs. So I'm just going to do the rest of them for the fields based on my invoice. And then we can look at the loop and set loop section for the related line items. So I've now completed adding the rest of my key value pairs from my invoice. And now I want to move on to the related line items. As you'll be able to see on the table for the related line items, the syntax is slightly different. In my example here, I have hashtag line and my curly brackets, and then the key quantity. And this hashtag line denotes where the repeating rows will start. And at the end, there is a backslash line, which denotes where the repeating loop section ends. And in between that are your usual uh, keys. So total excluding tax, backslash line. So my hashtag line and my backslash line denote the beginning and end of the loop section. You can call this particular key, which I've called line, you can call it whatever you wish. The only reason I've gone with such a short word is that I want to try and keep my quantity column quite narrow. So if I called it line items, I ended up having a much wider quantity column on my invoice. But you could just abbreviate it down to a simply one letter, but I just called mine line. You could call it line items or whatever you wish. The key thing is that it starts with a hash and ends with a backslash. So just like before, I'm going to add an item, but this time instead of a value, I'm going to add a loop or section. First thing that asks me is what is the key for this loop or section? And in my example, it's the word line denoting the beginning and the end of the loop. So now I can add an item and this is item number one. So I'm going to add item number one and this asks me for the key and value. So in my example, item number one is quantity. So the key is QTY and the value will be coming from the module that's looking up my line items here. So this is my quantity. And then add item two. The key for this is item description. And from my module, I'm going to use description. Item three, the key is unit price. And that comes from my module here, unit price. And my last item is the total excluding tax. So my key is total X tax, and that's gonna to match to this field here. And click OK. You also likely get a error here, which just says that this transformer can't be the last module in the root, which is perfectly fine as we will need to add in our next module, uh, a way to convert this Word document into a PDF.